So I got back here to the other side. I went ahead and took my uh, cord off of the shuttle so I can show you how I'm weaving here. And basically what I've done is I'm not working from the tip. Um, I, I basically bent the additional excess in half. So I only have to pull half of it through, essentially. Saves me some time there. Of course, I'm, looks like I'm on the wrong side of my cord underneath the chair, so I'm gonna fix that. So I think I can get away with one wrap over here to fill in the corner. Let's see what that looks like. Now, we're gonna do one more. So I'm gonna shift my, in fact, I don't like how that's coming across. I want this opposite side to be in nice and tight because I don't want that popping up. You have to be careful. You can pull on this cord hard enough to just snap it right in half. So you have to kind of get a sense for how much tension is the right amount. So let me clamp this. And uh, you'll notice as I clamp this, I'm actually catching the cord on the bottom side. I'm not clamping the top here because otherwise you'll get you'll get marks all across that cord and it doesn't look nice. Okay, so again, we're gonna come up back through this. And I wanna get one more wrap over here. One advantage of doubling it up is that it doesn't seem to twist up the cord near as much. Sometimes you'll get these little knots as it twists through. All it's doing is building up the twist into one area. The, tw the cord is all twisted together. Okay. It's kind of loosening back here. Keep that tight. And it's not that you have to keep it, you know, really, really tight to make it look good, though. It, it's, it is pretty tight. It just, the big thing is to keep your weave consistently tensioned. Uh, even if you're a little bit loose, you know, it may not look exactly the way I would, you know, typically try to get. But some, you know, some of my weaves are a bit looser than other times. Uh, that's okay, but as long as I was consistently keeping my tension the same, then, uh, you know, it turns out looking good. Okay, so now that I have these filled in, I'm gonna switch to filling in the center, uh, going back and forth. Now, since I already have a, a particular length of cord here, I really don't need to calculate it. I think I might have enough to fill it in. But essentially, if I was, if I was uh, adding on to, let's say, my last bundle and I was pretty close to the end, I could just measure and figure out how much uh, cord I would need so I, I wouldn't have to have an additional knot somewhere underneath there. But basically what it is is your typical Danish cord will be about seven cords per inch. So if I measure this, let me just grab my ruler. I measure this and I say, okay, uh, that is not quite uh, two inches, but it's, you know, I might just give myself a little bit extra and let's say it's 14. It's going to be 14 cords. And of course, I measure the front. That's actually more. So that's two and an eighth. So I'm gonna have to have a couple more wraps in the front. Um, so at least 15. So let's just assume we're gonna do 17. Well, uh, what you would do, let me pull this cord out so you can see an example. You might take another chair that you have and, and use its width between here and wrap around the bottom. But essentially what you're doing is, is if you have uh, 15 wraps you need to do, uh, then you're going to need 30 lengths from front to back. Or you can calculate it um, one full wrap. If I can get the end here, I'll show you what I'm trying to do. From there back to here would be one of those 15. Right? So if you probably notice from my elbow to the palm here is about one wrap. So you can probably calculate on most chairs going like this. Saying one. Two, three, and so forth until you get up to your number. And then if you do one or two little wraps extra, then you know you certainly have enough length. And what that's going to do is because you can typically hide all your knots 
in this area under between the, the weave and then it eliminates it. Don't try to hide them in these regions between the wrap because it pushes this because it's so thin. But over here you have this void. In fact, I have a knot probably landing about right there, but you can't even see it, which is good. And so if you get to this point, you calculate just the right amount that you need, then you can just about fill all this in and the only knot you have left is right at the end. But let me get to showing how we wrap from front to back. So we're gonna come up through the center. And I go ahead and uh, do this all in one go like this. And if you do it like that, then you don't have to do near as many weaves. And it's nice. And as you see, I go to the back. The front is a little wider. I'll have to take care of that toward the end. But um, if you see how this corner comes out a little bit further, well, I want to fill in there. I don't want to go to the front. So that's how you know, you're going to know which direction to go. Uh, you know, because this was my last wrap. Keep doing this. Usually I'll go almost all the way across. Uh, you know, I don't wanna I don't have to get too much, but this is about a good place to stop. Okay, get my cord hanging. So I usually start working from the side. Normally I'd probably work on that side, but the camera's there, so I'm not going to. So I would work on the side so I could, well, you'll see. Okay, so across here, it's pretty easy, right? See how I push there? See, I'm, again, I have to do a little indentation because I'm gonna have two cords trying to occupy one width of a cord space. In here, I actually want to be careful not to do too much tensioning side to side, because if I put a lot of tension, I'm going to flex this, these rungs in, and then it's going to loosen all this wrap out here. And it's really easy to do it. You can build a lot of tension in here. So really, the only place I want to put tension is going that direction to put a little crease. Uh, and these, I just want to keep snug, is really what I'm trying to do. Just keep snug, keep consistent pressure. Uh, so this is probably where you put the least amount of tension. In fact, you probably put more tension at the beginning of your weave than any other place. You probably slowly release tension as you get toward the end of your chair because out here, the more tension you have, again, you, you, even just in your standard wrap, uh, you're going to flex this rung, and you, if you're not careful, you'll kind of loosen up some of the weave here. You're, you're bound to do it anyway. Uh, on every chair, when I'm done, the wrap that's in this region is always a little bit looser than, you know, other spots, it seems. Okay, so I want to show how to uh, connect the cord together. Probably would have been good if I had done this earlier on in the video. But anyway, uh, this is really the proper way to do it, or the way I do it, and I never have any knots come loose. Um, so you know, basically I'm going to make a loop in both ends, uh, the cord that's attached to the chair and then the cord that I want to add on. And uh, I go ahead and bite onto it. I want to get it a little bit wet so that the, uh, the knot comes together tight. Okay, and so the way I, I'm going to lock these together, I'm going to take these two and slip this one in between the other one. I'm going to kind of twist it around it to the opposite side, and I'm gonna slip that loop, the end of the loop through. And so, as you can see, what you end up with is just these two cords coming through that, these two cords coming through the center of that loop, and then they come together. And you just go ahead and nip off the excess. I have my scissors handy, but make sure and cut the proper part of the cord. You can cut these up pretty close because, like I said, this knot, especially if it's wet, it uh, really gets stuck together and you can't take it apart.